Second time's a charm. Hello. Hi, everyone. I turned it off the first time. I meant to flip the screen around. Hello, say hi and where you're from. I'll just give everybody a few minutes to get on. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about spirit. And a lot of times we think that this topic is gonna to be something that is that is uh, very woo-woo or, you know, over the top. Um, talking about spirit, people think like, oh, you know, it's gonna be like um, something that's like hard to connect with or, you know, people who want action items and stuff like that. It's like, ah, oh, I can't relate to that stuff. But what I want you to know is today, um, what I want to help you to do is to understand the benefit of um, really connecting with yourself and whatever it is that is your higher power or the part of you that feels like there's more than just these things that we run around and do every single day to just get by. And to kind of introduce myself, if you're not familiar with me, my name is Sheila Veers and I help women break free from yo-yo dieting and self-sabotage so they can feel amazing in their skin. And um, for me, that's my passion, is really just helping people in general to find their power and to get connected with themselves in a way that makes them excited about life and really focus on creating the life of their dreams and really, you know, understanding how to, like I just said, not, not just get by, not like wake up every day and figure out how to get through the day, but to wake up every day and really be excited about what they get to do that day. Like really have that passion for life because when you have a passion for life, then it makes everything easier. It makes health easier. You know, it makes relationships easier. It makes doing the day-to-day -day stuff that we have to get done easier when you're focused and excited about life. So today, um, I've been doing a series over the past two weeks about, um, about different topics related to the four pillars of health. So first we talked about nutrition, we talked about movement, we talked about mindset, and then today we're talking about spirit. So this is the last piece. And this is all leading up to um, a webinar that I'm doing today at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, which will be covering these topics in more detail. So if you're interested and you'd like to hear more after this Periscope today, make sure to visit smashthescale.com and sign up so that you can join us on this free live webinar where we'll be talking more about these topics and really giving you very actionable tips that you can put into practice right away to get started on not only um, getting and maintaining the body of your dreams, but also the life of your dreams as well. So back to the topic today, we're talking about spirit. And what I want to give you is three tips, like what I want you to walk away from this Periscope today, and I took some notes, so let me just make sure I have, I hit everything. Um, what I want you to walk away from this Periscope today with are very actionable things that you can put into practice to start making um, yourself and your needs, your, your self-care, your health a priority in a very busy, hectic schedule. Because we always have so many things to do, right? Like the to-do list is never ending. Our schedules are jam-packed. And we always have these commitments that um, we have to follow through on. Like every single day we wake up, we're like, oh my God, I have all of these things to do. I know like I even felt that way today. I'm like, how am I gonna get it all done? And it can be very overwhelming. And when you start to try to figure out how to, to um, make health a priority and all of that, when you're like, okay, I have all of this to do and I don't even know how I'm gonna fit in my workouts or I don't even know how to fit in you know, making healthy meals or choosing healthy meals. Um, it can be difficult. So today I wanna give you three actionable tips to start bringing more sanity, sanity, sanity into a crazy, hectic schedule. And, um, and I know like I have lots of moms that, that I work with. I have lots of women who are in the corporate world and men too, like men struggle with this stuff just as much as women do. And it's really all about like finding that balance where you can start to understand how to start um, taking better care of yourself. So the first tip that I want you to walk away with today or the, the first sort of thing I want you to start thinking about how you can start bringing it into your life is meditation. 
Now, it doesn't have to be crazy woo-woo, like sitting in a dark room with your legs crossed, like, you know, meditating. Meditation is really just taking some time to connect with yourself. And the reason why meditation is so important, so actually give me some hearts if you already meditate or if you know the importance of meditation. Let me know, like, are, are you following me here? Um, meditation is important because it's not that we have to quiet our minds in the sense that like we need to stop thinking because obviously we have a mind for a reason like thinking is important like it's part of you know duh like it's important to think it's not just about quieting your mind for the sake of quieting your mind the reason why meditation is important is that what we tend to do is we get so caught up in just go 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 do 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 all of the time that we get very disconnected from ourselves and so what that means is that each and every one of us has an intuition we have that guidance from within that tells us um, what's best for us what decisions are going to be serving us and beneficial to us and what decisions are going to be maybe taking us in the opposite direction so Jen says love meditation try out headspace uh, if someone wants a guided 10 day for free I'm not an associated yeah I think I've heard of that before actually guided meditations are great especially when you're first starting out if you need help like you don't really know what to think about you don't really know what to do you don't really know how to quiet your mind um, when you're meditating a guided meditation can really help and so so getting back to what I was saying the importance of meditation isn't to just quiet your mind it's to start to connect with that guidance from within so when we take that time for ourselves to just be quiet and to really connect with ourselves and to just breathe like focusing on our breath is one of the easiest ways to start meditating it allows that inner wisdom to start coming through again and a lot of times we can become so disconnected from our intuition that we don't even know what it sounds like. We don't even know when we ask when we ask ourselves a question as simple as like, "What do I want to eat right now?" or "What kind of movement or exercise would be really would really feel good?" or, you know, in this decision of what I want to do tonight, what's the best thing for me? So often we've given that power to someone else, and we've let someone else make those decisions for ourselves that we don't even know the answer to those questions. And so, by meditating and quieting our minds, we're giving ourselves that chance to start connecting again to that voice from within, that inner guidance, that inner wisdom that always knows what's best for us. So, you can start with five minutes a day, and I usually suggest um, to my clients that. Uh, meditating in the morning first thing is the best time because when you start your day off with that connection with yourself then you're going to be very conscious in all of the decisions that you're making so instead of like I said just being go 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 and just starting up the day and just going like boom into action mode you're gonna be very centered in the sense that you're gonna focus on like what is it that I want what feels good to me what decisions are going to be serving me, what decisions are not going to serve me or take me in the direction of my goals, and then you can be very conscious about the decisions that you make throughout the day based on that. I think the air conditioner just turned on, so hopefully that's not too loud for you guys. But um, I'm sitting outside on the deck. So that's number one, meditation. Number two is appreciation. And so this kind of follows along in the same lines in the sense that Again, so often we can get so focused on everything else that's going on around us that we forget to appreciate. You know, we forget to think about those things that really are going well, and we can be so focused on all the stuff that's not going well, and it just sort of takes us in that spiral of negativity. And so, and it's it's almost like a learned behavior. Like it's almost like we learned that we could have nine things going really well and one thing going wrong. And we're supposed to focus all of our attention on that one thing that's going wrong in order to fix it because we we believe and we've learned that the way to fix things is to sort of force it by forcing all of our attention on that thing that's not right. Now, what I want you to do is realize that the more attention we put on those things that are not going well, the more that we're sort of feeding that energy. And we all have things that are going really, really well in our lives. We all have those things that even if it seems very hard, like if it feels like a hardship, it feels like something that's not going right, there's always a silver lining because there's always a lesson that we can learn from everything that we're dealing with. So by focusing on appreciation, 
we start to train our mind to look for things, even more things to appreciate. And I will tell you that in the times of my life that have been the hardest or have felt like at the time were the hardest, I started my day with a list of five things that I appreciated and then I ended my day with a list of five things that I appreciated about my life, about my body, about the people in my life, about anything, even the people that were very difficult for me to be around, I would look for things about them that I appreciated so that I could shift my own vibe, so that I could shift my own focus because ultimately, and now there's a lawnmower going, so that's even more noise. Hopefully, let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Just can somebody like give me a comment and let me know if I'm if I'm good volume wise, audio wise. Hearts are a good thing. Okay, good, awesome. All right, so uh, back to what I was saying. So appreciation, um, and the more that we focus on appreciation, the and now I'm getting a text message. Isn't this so funny? Um, so the more that we focus on appreciation, the more we start to open ourselves up to possibility. We start to open ourselves up to new ideas, to new things that potentially we weren't open to before when we were in that mindset of negativity. And so getting back to like our topic today, when your schedule is like freaking nuts and you feel like you just have no time in between anything to, to even think hardly, you can start thinking about like looking for things that you can appreciate about that schedule like wow like there's all these ways for me to really focus my creativity right now and these projects that I'm really excited about or thank God that I have the support in my life that helps me to be able to go to work and do these things and I have the child care or I have you know my parents to help me or I have the greatest sister or you know, my body is healthy and I wake up every single day. That was one of the things that like, even in the times of my life that have been the hardest, one of the things that have helped me the most is to like focus on the most general things that I possibly could appreciate. Like the fact that I woke up that, that morning and my body and my, my heart was beating all night long and my body was breathing all night long. Like, thank God, like, you know, we kind of forget how amazing it is that our bodies do these types of things that that we just sort of take for granted, right? And so when you're in that headspace where you're like, gosh, I don't even know what to appreciate, that's one of those things that you can just appreciate the fact that you're alive, that you're healthy, that you're able to walk around, that you have two legs, you know, you can hear, all of this stuff. So appreciation is so powerful. And the reason why is because again, it helps you to connect. It, it like takes those glasses off that are very narrow-minded and focus on the specific things that, you know, are very tough and it helps you to open up and expand to this greater picture of all of these things that actually are going well and that, you know, you can appreciate and that, um, and the main thing is that it opens you up to possibility, which leads into step number three. So tip number three or step number three is um, that you don't really need to know how to make changes. Like when you're in that when you're in that time or that space where you feel so overwhelmed that you don't even know what to do. Like you need to make changes. You need to do something for your health. You need to, you know, prioritize eating healthy. You need to prioritize working out. Or, and maybe even bigger than that, you need to prioritize your relationship. You need to prioritize spending time with the people that you love that you've been putting on the back burner. Or you need to prioritize figuring out what to do for your job because you're not happy and you don't know what else to do, but you just keep doing it because you don't feel like you have another option. If you can start to realize that number one, you want more, that there's something that right now you know needs to change, then sometimes, all the time actually, that's enough. It's, it's not your job to figure everything out when you have that like aha moment. Like when you start to realize like there has to be a better way. Has anyone ever felt like that? Like do you guys ever feel like I know something needs to change about what I'm currently doing, but I don't exactly know what that is. So yes, you guys agree? Are you feeling that way too? Or you have felt that way? I know I have. Like, there have been times, there have been many times in my life where I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, what I'm doing right now is not working for me. And I don't really know the answer of what's next, but I know that it's time for me to open up 
to more, to the next step, the next phase. And sometimes that can be kind of scary to think about. Sometimes that can be something that, you know, we feel like, I don't know if I'm ready for change, but I know I'm ready for change, if that makes sense. Like, you know, you, you get clear that, that you know that things are not working the way that they are, but you don't exactly know what to do next. And so the point of that is to say that you don't need to know the high, the high, you don't need to know the how, you just need to know the why. And the why is that bigger picture. You know, the why is getting connected to, like, what do I want for my career? Like, what is it that would be so exciting to me? You know, what would make me jump out of bed every single day and be excited? Or in a relationship, how do I want to feel in a relationship? You know, how, how do I want to spend my time with someone else? Like, what is the point of a relationship to me? And you can start to learn for yourself, like these are the emotions that I want to feel in a relationship if I'm going to be in one. Or say with your with your health, if with your body. When I work with clients, you know, what we always end up talking about is that it's not just about the number on the scale. Like for myself, for many of my clients, what happens is you push, 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 you get to that number on the scale and then you realize that Getting to a number on the scale doesn't mean anything, and it's no more near as rewarding as you think that it's going to be. Like the reason why we set any goals for ourselves specifically related to our body is because we believe that once we get there, then we're gonna feel the way that we want to feel. So when you start to think about your bigger why, you start to recognize, why do I want to be 120 pounds? Or why do I want to be, sorry, I'm getting distracted by the lawnmower. Um, what is it about that that I feel like is going to be helpful or make me feel good about myself? And ultimately what happens is that um, we start to recognize that in order to feel amazing about ourselves, we have to start feeling that way now. Like we have to start understanding that, you know, I guess it's kind of refocusing where I'm going with this. Like a lot of times when I have an initial conversation with someone on the phone or a client, when we talk about like, well, what does that goal mean to you? Like, what's the purpose of that? They'll tell me like, you know, fast forward six months from now, if I was to achieve that goal, ultimately what would feel good about that is that I would finally be at peace with myself. I would finally be able to focus on the things in my life outside, I would be able to stop obsessing about my body all of the time. I would be able to stop obsessing about food all the time. If I hit that goal, then I can start living my life. So if you start to flip that and just get focused on living your life or you get focused on your why, like whatever that bigger why is, to be at peace with myself. Like I want to be at peace with myself. I want to feel amazing in my skin. I want to feel amazing in my relationship, like whatever it is that's your goal in whatever area of life, then the how starts to figure itself out for you. Like circumstances and events will pop up and because you're open and you're ready, it will make sense to you. You will get an intuitive hit that tells you, oh, actually that seems like a good idea. I should probably do that. Or, or like, oh my God, I never really thought about it before like that. But yes, actually that's what I should do. Or you know, it's like opening yourself up and giving yourself permission to know and be connected with that deeper why makes things make more sense. And so those are my three tips for finding more um, like peace and ease in a super crazy hectic schedule. Do you guys have any questions? Is there anything that you know, you need more help with on this topic that anything that I can explain further for you, like, are you struggling with this right now? Do you have a super crazy schedule and you don't know what to do next? Do you feel like um, you want to make your health a priority? Is there anything that I can help you guys with um, further? Just type it in the comments and I'll, and I'll, you know, do what I can to help you even more. And beyond that, like I said earlier, so this is all in support of uh, this past few periscopes that I've been doing have been in support of a webinar that I'm doing today at four o'clock Eastern time where I'm gonna be diving into these topics with my friend and um, Pilates and fitness instructor, Lauren Herrera, where we'll be covering all of these topics, the four pillars of health in greater detail. We're gonna give you more tips 
actionable tips that you can put into practice that are like real world stuff for people who are, like I said, super busy, moms who are, you know, working full time jobs and trying to balance the kids and relationship and everything else. Um, oh yeah, so where can you find the webinar? It's at smashthescale.com. So you'll go to smashthescale.com and sign up and then you'll get the link for the webinar so that you can make sure that you can either watch it live at four o'clock or you'll get the replay if you're not able to make it. Um, but hopefully that will really give you even more clarity on what to do next, how to do it next, what you know to get like what you need to do to get the support that you need in order to really start going after those goals. Like really start making the changes that you need to make to make yourself a priority and to really um, you know start living the life of your dreams or start making progress toward it and not just keep doing the same things that you've done every single day just because that's what you've always done. You know and and also to realize that in order to have the things that we want in life, a lot of times we think that we have to work like super freaking hard to get them or that we have to put them off until like we're 65 and then that's when we're allowed to have an easy life or a happy life. But I want you to realize that you deserve that now. Like you deserve to have the life of your dreams right now. And you, you also deserve to give yourself permission to stop putting it off. And, um, and the sooner you can do that, and the sooner you make that choice to start making yourself a priority and your happiness a priority, the sooner you, making, you start making progress in that direction. So I'm gonna end there, and um, I hope to see you guys on the webinar later today. Again, that was 4 p.m. Thank you so much, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, that, that's 4 p.m. Eastern today. Smashthescale.com is where you can get the information and sign up for the webinar, and I will hopefully see you guys in a little bit. Take care.